Hi, Jeremy here, Modern Vitality. In today's video, chronic fatigue syndrome, you're using your pillow wrong. I'm gonna be showing you something that I've learned and noticed over years of working with people with complex chronic inflammatory conditions. There are some simple mistakes a lot of people make with their pillows that have long-term consequences and slow down their healing. So we're gonna undo those mistakes. I'm gonna teach you how to really use a pillow for real, the right way, so that you don't mess yourself up. And we're also gonna look at the, the bigger picture, the larger implications of what that means for your entire healing process. I know I've set the bar really high, so let's get started. You should have seen my wife's face when I walked out the door today carrying my pillow. I promise I'm not taking a nap at the office, right? <laughs> this is for work, I swear. So I brought a pillow, and why, why I'm focusing on this pillow thing is because I've worked for a long time. I started private practice in 2009 as an acupuncturist. I've got a strong, strong Eastern medicine background. I'm a clinical herbalist. That's where I do most of my best work with complex chronic inflammatory conditions. It's primarily herbs. Acupuncture can be helpful too, right? But you know, with herbs, I can work with people all over the planet. It's very freeing. But what I've noticed in my acupuncture practice is that there are so many times, so many times where I have walked into a treatment room and the patient's there on the table laying there with a pillow and they look horribly uncomfortable, horribly uncomfortable. And I've started to talk to people and say, hey, uh, are, are you comfortable? You know, are you actually comfortable? And they're like, I don't know. I don't even know, <laughs> okay? So I found it's worth it to take a minute and get the pillow set up correctly, get it set up right. And we're gonna come back to this, I don't know if I'm comfortable thing, because this is a huge, there's such a deeper conversation here beyond a pillow, all right? We're, we're just pulling a thread. So I'm gonna teach you the pillow stuff so you're not making mistakes, because really, if you're asleep for a third of your life, or a lot of times people that have heavy fatigue is one of their symptoms, right? It's like brain fog, all these pains, fatigue is another one. You're fatigued, you're resting a lot. You have no choice, right? Your mitochondria are telling you it's time to rest. So you wind up with your head on a pillow. Let's not be sabotaging our healing. Let's actually get the most out of the, the rest time. So that has to do with how you drive your pillow, how you maneuver your pillow. So I'm gonna share with you the technicals here, okay? One of the first things to understand is your position for sleep. So if you are a side sleeper or a back sleeper, that's gonna change how you use a pillow. And I'm gonna show you this in just a second. If you sleep on your belly face down, I can't help you. <laughs> you're already, your neck's gonna be cranked and all that. I know sometimes it happens. This is life, right? I'm gonna show you the perfect pillow, like how to do this. But in all honesty, in all reality, we set ourselves up for success and then sometimes chaos happens, life happens, and we work backwards from there. So don't beat yourself up if you sleep weird, right? We can always work with that. We can always try to get it a little more aligned. But what I'm gonna show you is if you're a back sleeper, primarily, then you need to arrange your pillow differently than if you're a side sleeper. And this will all make sense in just a second. Why is this important? Okay, we have to protect our neck. The people I work with, like for example, the people in my group, I've got an international group, maybe you've heard about it, Modern Vitality Solutions and Support. I'm always talking about it in all these videos because it's my favorite place to hang out, right? It's where we come together internationally. There's all kinds of people in there. It's a free group to join and they're all working through the stages, right? Stage one, two, three, and four, and they're going through their healing process. Okay, one of the things that's super important for the people in my group, the people I work with at a higher capacity is the neck. And I'm gonna share this with you now because so many people don't know this stuff, all right? We don't know, we don't know to take care of our neck. The, the neck is extremely important, especially if you're trying to heal from a complex chronic health condition for a bunch of reasons. One of them is that you've got a brain in your skull and you've got a heart in your chest. This is making sense so far, right? Your blood has to be able to get from your heart to your brain. What happens if your neck is all tight, all jacked up, all crooked, pinched off? I want you to think about squeezing a garden hose, twisting a garden hose, stepping on a garden hose. Those are your arteries. Those are your veins. So we want to do things to align our neck and take good care of it so that it's not super tight and twisted because that's pinching off the flow of blood from our heart to our brain. With brain fog being such a common sign, and there are multiple, multiple causes of brain fog, which I've done in other videos, right? Going through with a stage model and understanding immune causes, digestive causes, neuroadrenal causes, blood circulatory causes, right? We're talking mainly about the blood circulatory cause right now, because you're getting that kind of pinch, right? It's getting compressed, not good. So we need to take care of our neck for the blood flow. We also need to take care of our neck for the lymphatic drainage. You've heard about the lymph, right? Lymph nodes, lymph system. There's a lot of things we can do to encourage that lymphatic flow. One of the big things is making sure that our neck is warm, supple, right? It has movement in there. You can do massage and things like that. But of course, if your neck is all twisted and jacked up for eight hours a day, because you're sleeping on a pillow weird, 
that's not helping the flow, just like it's not helping the blood flow, right? So we need to align that. We need to fix that up. It's really important. There's other reasons too, but for, for the most part, just start thinking about your neck. Start respecting your neck. It's a vital highway between your heart and your brain, okay? These are two like critical areas that need to be alive. You can survive without your intestines. You can survive without a bladder. You can survive without a stomach. We need to keep the heart and the brain flowing, right? Very important. And the neck is the thoroughfare between the two. So we use our pillow to respect our neck, right? So when you have your pillow, if you are a, a side sleeper, I want you to notice, imagine the, the beds here, right? I'm sleeping on my side. The, the distance between your shoulder and the side of your head, that's how thick your pillow should be. So that way when you're laying down, right, you're not doing this. So you keep the pillow wedged in there to maintain this kind of alignment. So if you have a pillow like this, you would just fold it up, right? And you wanna fold it up until it's about as wide as from your ear to your shoulder, you see? This is so hard to do without an actual bed, right? So there's our first step. If you're a side sleeper, make sure you've, you've either got one pillow folded up so that it's double height, or you've got two pillows stacked on top of each other so that it's the right height, or you've got some kind of super massive pillow, whatever you got, because you want to create this, you want to maintain this kind of alignment while you're sleeping, not this, right? So if we just do just one here and then you go to sleep, it's going to be, you're just, you're, you're wrecked all night. And we get good at what we practice, right? So if you practice having a bent kinked neck, what do you think you're getting good at? What do you think your fascia is doing? What, what kinds of patterns do you think you're learning? And of course there can be ramifications there because now we start to get torsion and twisting and kinking in one part of the body. And because our whole connective tissue is connected, we'll start to get compensations other places, all from your neck. Okay, so if you're a side sleeper, double it up so that you've got that width handled. If you're a back sleeper, the distance between your, your neck, here, I'll turn to my side so you can see better. The distance between your neck, right, and the bed, it's a lot smaller than the distance between your shoulder and your ear. So you don't need so much pillow. And in fact, we've got the curve going, right? So we've got the head is round here, sticking out, and then it goes in for the neck, you see? So all you really need, all you really need is just a little support under here, little cervical support. They make special pillows for this, like chiropractic pillows that are just, they're just like these orthopedic pillows. Maybe you have one, maybe you've tried them. I've found that actually I like better to do it with a regular pillow and all you do is you roll it, right? So now I've rolled this thing and I've got a double, kind of a double width here. And that's gonna go under my neck. And then this little straggler that's left over is gonna go behind my actual skull. Works pretty great. So here we go, right? I've, I'll try to start it again for you. So roll it, right? So one part of it's doubled up. And then this would be you getting ready for bed. What happens here that's really awesome if you're a back sleeper is you've got it doubled up here, see? So it's it's thick behind your neck, right? And then you got a little bit up top behind your head, okay? And then what's really cool is when you're laying down, and I don't have a bed behind me, right? But when you lay down, that pushes these like this around your ears, like that. So what happens is you'll actually get this kind of insulated sensory deprivation kind of effect going on, right? Very relaxing, very nice, especially if you've got pets, children, a partner who snores or whatever. Not my wife, absolutely not, right? But you know, <laughs> sometimes people snore, there's noises. You keep keep this around your ears, it helps to muffle all that. It really, really is, it's super relaxing. So I'll show you from the side too. So I've got it rolled up, so it's thicker behind my neck and it's a little bit thin just behind my skull here, right? And then you disappear into this thing, okay? That's the way to do it, for sure. So, how do we mess this up? Well, basically anything that doesn't maintain that alignment is gonna be a problem. I've seen a lot of times people, this is what I notice a lot of times with, with acupuncture and watching people, because I, I have had a, a career where I get to see people in different types of contexts than normal, right? If I was a bank teller, I wouldn't see people how they use their pillows all the time. You just don't see that stuff. But when you're in a, a treatment room setting and there's a massage table and pillows and things, you get to see how people lay down on these. And this, this gets into my second point here. And we're, we're going to cover this because this is really profound. And I want to make sure that you got that because that's the real lesson, 
Okay, that's the real takeaway. We're going to get to all this. When you have a pillow, right, people will just do weird stuff. They'll just throw themselves on it, right? It could be any which way. Like I've walked into a room and somebody's like this, laying on their back and the pillow is just crooked and it's down their back. And what's happening, right? It's it's twisting their head. It's pushing their shoulder up forward. They're just all squiggly, right? And it's not their fault. It's not their fault. It's not like they're wrong. People do this. I, I'm not here to punish people or you know, try to bring down your self-esteem. Like, hey, you don't even know how to use a pillow, right? But what I am going to do is we're going to have a little fun with this because when you see, when you see that, right, what's the larger sign here? There's a couple of them. One is that people are disconnected from their bodies. When I ask, when I look and I can, you know, you start to develop an eye for this and you can see all the misalignments and you go, does, does that look comfortable? It doesn't look comfortable. And then you ask, hey, is, are you even comfortable? I don't know. I don't know if I'm comfortable, right? That's a problem. First of all, we're disconnected. So the way you use your pillow, right, says a lot about who you are, what kind of person you are. Are you the kind of person who can tell when you're uncomfortable? With pillows, with everything, right? Are you tuned in or are you numbed out? And I would encourage you, sometimes we numb out, understandably, because these conditions bring pain right? Neurological overwhelm. There's a lot of problems with this. Like it, it's normal to, to want to take a break from that, right? But sometimes these breaks last a long, long time and it starts to become the way we are now. It starts to become the new normal is this numbed out, disconnected type of sense where you lay down on a pillow that's all crooked or halfway under your back or there's no neck support or you're like this or whatever and you can't even tell. So we have to tune in to our bodies, Right? We have to tune back in. That's a prerequisite. There's no amount of learning how to fluff this up that's going to replace tuning in. Right? Of course. No one will use the things I'm sharing here if they haven't already tuned in and they can't start to feel it. Okay? It's a prerequisite. So start tuning into your body, even if it's uncomfortable. And this isn't just for pillows. This has to do with everything. Temperature. Humidity. People talking to you. <laughs> right? Are you enjoying this conversation? I don't know. Well, you know, start figuring out if this is an abusive relationship. Start figuring out if this is somebody who doesn't respect boundaries or somebody who's trying to take advantage of you or somebody who's an energy vampire is basically just sucking you dry like a juice box, right? You can start asking yourself this kind of question a lot. Am I comfortable? Or another way to say it is how does this feel? If we don't want to judge it, we could just be very open. How does this feel? How do you feel with that pillow crooked under you like that? Huh, yeah, interesting. I don't have an emotional attachment to it, but I do feel like my shoulder's getting pushed forward and I do feel like my head's kind of kinking. Yeah, noted. Okay, what do we want to do with these facts, right? You start looking at everything like this. How do you feel about that food? How do you feel after you eat that? How do you feel about the culture you're around, your family culture? What do you do for leisure time? How do you feel about that? How do you feel about where your life is? Right? All these things matter because they're all signals for your nervous system. We have to re-expand that. We can't hide forever. If you found this channel, you're not a hider. <laughs> right? I mean, that's the thing. People who want to just like lay down and die don't wind up cruising through my channel, binge watching all my videos, which I would recommend you do, go through. Right? I'm going to become your new Hulu, your new Netflix, whatever. Right? You're going to go through here and learn all these things and just extract as much information as you can because it's going to help you. Right? It's actually productive. These kinds of people aren't quitters, right? It's just not the way it goes by nature. If you're here, you want to do something about it, right? So start feeling. Don't be afraid of that. And some of you are already there. Some of you are like, yeah, Jeremy, I know. I, I try to feel everything, right? I try to always assess this environment. Great, good. Keep that. Hold on to that. Now, the next piece is doing something about it, right? Because you can say, hey, are you even comfortable with that pillow? Uh, you know what? I don't know. Yeah, I'm not very comfortable. And then nothing, nothing changes, right? In case you haven't noticed, the pillow is a metaphor. The pillow is a motif for everything in your life. This could be very overwhelming, right? How do you feel about your job? Ah, I don't know. Well, are you comfortable with it? Oh, it's very stressful. I don't really feel uh, like the work is rewarding. I'm not valued in my workplace. Okay, are you gonna rearrange that pillow, right? Can you take some power? Because to do this, right? To fluff up your little pillow. It's a small skill, right? It's a small motor movement, right? But in order to do that, you've got to make a big decision that you're worth making a change about. Oh, I'm not very comfortable. 
okay, well, do you value yourself? Do you value your comfort? Do you value the health of your neck as part of your healing process is taking care of that? Do you want that lymphatic drainage happening so you can start to get better? Yeah, do something about it, right? Sometimes it means you have to actually physically make a change. You've got to fluff up the pillow, right? You got to rearrange it. You got to, you got to take a little bit extra energy and you've got to apply it to your environment to make a difference, to change something so that you can have a better time long-term, right? The pillow is a metaphor. <laughs> this stuff's everywhere. Change your diet, change your friends, change your outlook, change your belief system, change the news you watch, right? So many of these things. Change the way the climate hits you. Start protecting yourself, protecting your body. The people who do the best, and I know I've, I've spoken about this in other videos, the people who do the best on a healing path are the people who aren't afraid to start getting out there a little bit and making some changes, making some adjustments to their environment. They're not afraid to try new things. They're not afraid to stick out and have people around them go, you're weird. You use a pillow weird. Have you, well, I mean, have you ever seen somebody use a pillow like this? Maybe you have, maybe you do this, I don't know, but you get it like this, roll it up, right? Double it up and then you're laying here and it just <laughs> smashes around your ears. Who sleeps like that? Somebody may walk in, you know, a family member might walk in and see you like this and go, boy, you look weird sleeping like that. Yeah, great, good, I'm doing my thing. I'm taking care of me, right? That's important. This doesn't affect you, <laughs> leave me alone, right? That kind of attitude will go a long way towards getting your health back. Not being afraid to stick out, not being afraid to do things that are a little bit different. Always, we have to start prioritizing this because if we don't make our own health a priority, first of all, what kind of subconscious signal are you sending to your own self, right, about that? But then two, who's gonna do it for you? Who's gonna come around and tuck your pillow, change your pillow every night, right? What kind of what kind of archetypes are going on if that's how you wanna live, right? No, I don't do my pillow. I only have to have somebody else come change it for me, <laughs> right? No, handle your own pillow, right? And again, the pillow's a metaphor. It's everything, it's everything. If you're struggling with a complex chronic health condition, I would encourage you to join our group. We've got a fantastic group of people. We're international. I think I mentioned it earlier. We're off big tech. We've got our own private chat group. It's free to join. You've got me in there troubleshooting people's cases from all over the planet, right? Everybody's going through the stages, stage one, two, three, four, immune, digestive, neuroadrenal, blood circulation, just kind of a bonus stage at the end, but you know, not a lot of people even need to do that kind of work, but we have it, it's all there. And you can watch people going through, you can see the wins, which is awesome, very inspiring to see real healing stories, real successes. I mean, we've got a positive group. Everybody's very vibrant and supportive. And you can also see when somebody has a bad day. You can see when we get triggers, you can see backslides, you can see flare-ups, and you can watch a resilient healing system in action while we navigate and troubleshoot in real time. So that's pretty cool. I don't know of any other place like that that exists. I created a few years back. I think it's a wonderful, wonderful place to be. So if you are at all working on your healing process, you might wanna do it in good company. We're very positive. There's a lot of introverts in there. There's not a lot of pressure, right? You can kind of show up and do your thing and everybody's very respectful. We do fill up, there can be a wait, your application link's in the description below this video, right? I keep it there so you can find it pretty easily. And if your application looks good, like you'd be a great fit for what we're doing in our group, I'll get you in there as soon as I can. It might be like a month, two months. I try to do monthly cohorts so you don't have to wait too long, but I also try to keep the group small so I know who I'm talking to, right? That way I can answer your questions with some specificity. It's a balance. In the meantime, you might consider subscribing to this channel, liking this video, basically signaling to the algorithm that you wanna see more stuff like this so that you can start to improve your life and get your health back. All right, I hope this helps you. Let's get you feeling better. Cheers.